Hi, I'm Dave. I'm a professional 3D artist working in the animation industry. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this 3D car based on an illustration by Miroslav Sasek. And I'll run through my process for modeling, texturing, basic animation, rendering, and compositing. Here's the original design, which was featured in the book This is Rome, published in 1960. It has a bunch of elements that I really was curious to try to translate into 3D. Those include selective line work, seen here in purple, also the use of negative space. Some of these car parts look white, but since the background is also white, it's almost like those parts are 2D cutouts where you don't see the 3D form at all. And I'd say probably the main aspect of this illustration that I was hoping to capture in 3D was the forced perspective or like the contradictory perspective cues in the form. So for instance, it looks like we're seeing these characters from a perfectly side profile, and that goes the same for this spare tire on the back of the car, but it's contradicted by what we're seeing in the front with both these headlights visible and the three-quarter perspective on the whole front panel, as well as like what we're seeing um, on the interior and the front windshield. So if we were to think of this from the top down, let's say that's the camera, and these are the two headlights in the camera view, if we represented the car by this rectangle with a spare tire on back, we would kind of see that we shouldn't probably see that back spare tire. Um, but if we were to draw the headlights here and have the spare tire from the side facing the camera, we'd have to draw the shape of the car as this kind of trapezoid in order for both the headlights and the tire to be in view of the camera, as you can see. One thing I made sure to do before getting started was to look at a bunch of reference of the kind of car Sasek used to create his illustration, which I think is this kind of Fiat sedan taxi from the late 1940s. And it's just cool to see what choices Sasek made to simplify these forms. And I can also see some of the elements that are hidden from view in the original illustration, which should help me figure out how to flush out the model. Anyway, without further ado, here's how I created this render, starting with some rough modeling in Maya. So when starting this car model, all I'm doing really is um, taking the original illustration and tracing out all the distinct parts, starting with the main body, the fenders, the roof and wheels, luggage, etc. Um, and I'm creating these silhouettes just so I have a good starting point to accurately represent the illustration when I'm, when I'm refining the model. So once I have all my silhouettes blocked in, I can start adding some topology and pulling out um, those points and shapes in depth while preserving the basic silhouette. I'm primarily using just the uh, multi-cut tool here to add points and edges just where I need the topology to create the forms and trying to be as economical as possible. I don't want uh, these shapes to be overly complicated or detailed. I'm thinking of this geometry like cardboard cutouts almost that I'm pushing into a 3D form, but really the, the geometry's sole purpose is to hold and represent the textural information of the illustration. Okay, so now that I have my basic uh, blocked in car, I can see how much I'll need to skew this shape in order to hit the illustration. But I'm going to do something slightly counterintuitive. I'm going to remove the skew or forced perspective from the whole car with the intention of adding it back in later using a lattice. But uh, for now I'm taking it out for two reasons. Uh, one, it'll be a lot easier for me to just work on one side of the car and mirror it symmetrically to, to the other side of the car so it reduces the amount of overall uh, work I'll need to do. And two, uh, I know I want to show this car in a turntable from all sides and I, I don't really want um, the, the deformation or skew of the car to be totally obvious when the car rotates around in space. So now with the symmetrical car blocked in, uh, I can do a little bit more modeling refinement to the various components, um, and I can also start adding in some curves on top of the model, which I'm going to render later as line work. Uh, I'm eventually going to strip out some of this um, illustration texture from the car because it's kind of low resolution and I'm going to replace it with my own painted texture which won't contain this line work. So I'm making the choice to represent the line work as a render layer using the curves I'm creating. And here I'm just adding thickness and resolution to some of the 3D cutout shapes just so it'll look nice and smooth when it's rotating in space. And just going around cleaning up some of these uh, rough forms, making sure all the shapes run close together so you won't see any gaps in the car 
And this is the kind of um, modeling I might do on a production asset, but still trying to preserve the simplicity of the geometry. So for these two characters, I'm creating their models in a kind of unorthodox way. And this is definitely not a standard or typical approach to modeling characters, but in this instance, I'm treating these two like they're part of the car, uh, where I'm primarily trying to preserve that initial side profile shape like the rest of the car and basing a lot of my modeling decisions around that. I'm also not really too concerned with topology because I know these characters won't actually have to animate, which makes everything way easier. At this point, I have my model mostly finished and I've created some basic UVs here so that I can do some simple texture painting using Photoshop and Mari. So looking at this illustration, you can clearly see the grain of the paper coming through in the color. So to capture that, I created my own higher resolution texture map using a combination um, of close-up paper images and just a touch of basic painting in Photoshop to use as a base grain. Then in Mari, I just assigned colors to portions of the car and then projected that base grain texture I had uh, as an overlay, so it's kind of embedded in the car textures. So here it is with the paper grain isolated, and here it is now with the um, black and green colors assigned. And uh, really the only specific painting I did in Mari was for the textures here on the luggage and then also the character faces. For the luggage, it was just a matter of painting these um, stickers, uh, some of the wear and tear on the edges, and then some of the uh, line work, which was subtle enough in the illustration that I thought it would work best to just embed it within the texture in this instance rather than using curves um, in the render layer. Now for the character heads, it was a similar process of just assigning the basic color to um, the head and then painting just a few elements, including like a bit darker values around the eyes and again, some subtle line work to help define the lips and the ears, uh, similar to how they look in the original illustration. And here comes one of the more uh, satisfying parts of this process, applying all those textures to the geometry. So I'm just gonna go through really quick and uh, create shaders for the different parts of the car. And I'm only concerned right now about the color channel for those shaders because I'm not planning on rendering the geometry with any real light response. So I'm not thinking about like bump or specular or sheen or anything like that because none of those things are really represented in Sasek's illustration. It's really just about um, shape and color and line work. And here you can see uh, I'm adding a little bit of extra geometry for the eyes. And it could have been texture potentially, but I was just thinking like there might be an off chance that I wanted these characters to be able to look around or blink or something. So this way I'll have the um, geometry to animate with. And I'm also adding a curve here for the nose. And this will show up later as line work that will help define the form of the nose in the front view. And the last step I'm going to do here is to add a background shader to some of these parts that I want to appear white in the final render. And now with that, I'm ready to get started with the animation. For the animation to match the overall aesthetic of the illustration, I figured I should keep it pretty simple. So I referenced some animation from Bruno Bozzetto and Hanna-Barbera, where you can see some of the car parts uh, jumping around a bit, like the car is driving over bumpy ground, or the engine is just making the whole car shake. And to capture that, I just made a very simple rig by a parent constraining portions of the car to a few controllers and gave them some subtle translation and rotation to try to evoke a similar feel to some of the 2D animation I was referencing. One of the main visual cues to make it seem like the car is in motion is rotating the wheels. But as you can see, the wheels aren't perfectly round, so rotating them in this oval shape looks a little uh, odd by default. So what I needed to do was make it appear as if the wheels were rotating within their oval silhouette. And the way I achieved that uh, was by simply making the wheel more circular by default, then creating a shell object that I could use to deform the wheel as a secondary process. So the wheel can rotate uh, as a circle and then be deformed in a live way with that circular animation intact. So here I am making a circular shell to roughly match the shape of the wheel, keeping that live rotation of the wheel geometry, then doing a wrap deform operation from the wheel to the shell, and then pushing the shell's circular shape into an oval, letting the wheel geometry deform with it. So as far as the wheel is concerned, it's still a circle and can rotate around itself, but because of the wrap deformer, it's now pushed into an oval shape. And now with all the animation pretty much ready, 
I can lattice the whole car along with the animation controls and push it back into the approximate shape of the illustration from the side view. Now because I want the characters to still look like they're in side profile, I'm not letting the characters get affected by the lattice, and I'll just move them into the right location separately. A nice thing about the lattice is that as long as I don't delete history, it'll remain live and the car can rotate freely within it, and I can also animate the lattice points over time, so it can have a full effect at the start and end of the turntable, but change its shape for different angles of the car's rotation, which helps uh, to make the deformation less detectable. So I set up this render using Arnold with just a few render layers, uh, one layer for the overall color of the car exterior, which will be the main foundation of the composite. I have a duplicate layer for the interior, which is basically the same, uh, except the main cab is gray. I have a layer that I can use as a black and white mat to differentiate exterior and interior. I have a layer for lines that are defined by the curves I created, and a separate layer for line work that is defined by the silhouettes of the bumper geometry. So using a slightly different method there uh, for creating line work. I also have this separate layer for the line work of the character's noses, and the reason I'm keeping this separate is because I want the lines to come and go depending on the angle of the characters to camera. And that's really it for my uh, render setup, and I'll show you how uh, I put all these render layers together in the compositing section. Okay, so here I'm using After Effects to combine my render layers into the final composite. And I'm using the main color layer as the base, and I've stacked the interior color layer on top, which is isolated by that black and white mat I was showing. And quickly, the reason I did this, rather than texturing the exterior black and interior gray in one map, is because um, in this way, anytime you look through the glass, the cab will appear gray. And if I had simply assigned the exterior faces black and then the interior faces gray, you might have seen that sliver of black creeping around the edges of the windows. And in this way, uh, it just keeps it visually as simple as possible. Now, here is the layer with the line work for the noses isolated, and as I mentioned, I'm now able to have these lines come and go depending on which way the characters are facing the camera. And lastly, I have all the other line work here isolated, and I'm affecting it very slightly using a 2D displacement, which is using my original paper texture to deform the line work, giving it a more hand-drawn feel, um, as you can see here. And that's pretty much it. Thanks a ton for watching. I hope all that made sense. Uh, and if you have any questions or are curious to hear more about any part in particular, please just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to go further in depth on any portion of the process. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed it.